Good afternoon. Thanks for tuning into Dear Cyber Sue. I'm Susan McCord. Today's topic is Does your family upbringing influence who you choose as a romantic partner? Well, the one thing that I find very, very important during your youth is to have mentorship, whether it comes from your parents, from your relatives, maybe a teacher or some of your great friendships. It's super important to have support and guidance while you're finding your way through life. And a lot of situations happen in family. There's drama, there's abandonment issues, there's divorce, there's all sorts of stuff that transpires and leaves a child or a young, younger person feeling alone. What happens when you have a troubled childhood? It's your core. It hits you right in the center of your being. And so you are now wondering who you can trust, who, if you're ever going to have love, because maybe you don't know what it is. Maybe you weren't shown. If you don't have that type of loving relationship with your family at a very early age and continuing on into your adulthood, it can really screw with your head. You don't know what you're supposed to do moving forward because you weren't shown the way. You didn't have great role models. You didn't have maybe parents or siblings that you could be loving with or trusting with because you didn't have that unconditional love. This is what happens to a lot of people and why they make so many mistakes in relationships as they get older, because they don't know what they're looking for. They weren't shown. So yes, in answer to this question, you absolutely can have a tough time finding a romantic partner that understands you and you understand them. Because if you still have dialogue in your head from when you were younger, it's really hard to remove it without doing a lot of homework. Many men and women who come from troubled childhood or a place of not feeling loved have a really difficult time moving forward in their life because they repeat a lot of patterns. They repeat what's familiar to them. Even though we all know it's not the place you should go, it still happens because it's the norm for you. It's what you remember. You don't have the tools to figure out how to move forward into another place because you've never been there. This is why it's so important if you are finding that you have a lot of negative, repetitive dating or relationship patterns to find out what's going on. Get to the root of the problem. Childhood dialogue is so hard to remove. I mean, think back as I'm saying this to you about even if you had great parents, something that maybe they said to you, or maybe your siblings said to you that was maybe a bit negative. It's probably the one thing that really sticks out in your mind. And if you have a lot of that growing up as a young person, you either start to believe it or you get angry about it or you keep repeating it. And this is why it is so important to try and get rid of that dialogue. Get that out of your head. You have to change your mindset and you have to ask for help. Because if you don't have any mentorship in your life or anybody that you can go to that you trust and that has some great insight for you, you're going to stay on that same path that isn't working out. Whenever a relationship ends or you have a, a tough time with a certain dating scenario, Take the time to write out what transpired. What did you notice? What do you think your part in it was? What was their part in it? Is there anything that you can consciously do to improve upon that? Because you know you do deserve to be in a relationship. It's not that you don't, but if you wanna change up what isn't working, you gotta change up what isn't working. And this is the hard part for so many people because they don't have the clarity on how to move forward. Ask yourself some simple questions. Do you hold on too tight to somebody in the beginning or even when you're in a, in a long-term relationship? Are you, are you holding on tight? Are you running away the minute you become a little bit emotionally involved? Are you emotionally available to find love with someone? Or is there a wall? that keeps coming up because these are things that will stop you from having a relationship. But if you know what they are and you're aware that they're happening, it's a lot easier to change that. It's a lot easier to work on that because now you know what the bigger problem is. 
coming from an unloved situation, family situation, is very, very hard because that's supposed to be your safe place. That's where you're supposed to grow up and feel comfortable and feel that you can trust those people. And if you don't have that for the majority of your formative years, it is so difficult to understand how to move forward in your adulthood because you've got those lessons and nothing else to go by. So if today's topic is resonating with you in any way, I really suggest that you get some help to talk to somebody about it because sometimes it's just a matter of clearing a few of those those stuck cobwebs that are, are around your heart that are keeping you from finding happiness and finding love. And sometimes it's just that dialogue that keeps repeating that, you know, you don't feel good enough. You don't feel worthy enough of having somebody to love in your life because you weren't shown what it was. You are always worthy of having that in your life. And if you're finding that all your relationships and things like this are just continually not working out for you, please, talk to a therapist, a counselor about it, and get to the root of the, po the problem. Because it's not right for you to sit here and have to go through this over and over and over again. If you're watching this video, you've probably got some of these things I was talking about, and it's not too late to fix them. Thank you so much for tuning in to Dear Cyber City today. Please subscribe, I love it when you do, and leave any comments you have below the video. Thank you so much for tuning in.